Okay, today we are going to talk about Junkertown, the whole map. We're going to talk about some things I recommend doing, some things I recommend watching out for, focusing largely on the defender's perspective because they are usually the team trying to do something more specific. The attackers are usually a little bit more free in what they're trying to do. So let's start with the first checkpoint. So the first thing to watch out for anytime you're defending on Junker Town, just be ready for a Bastion to pop out at you. This was the map that popularized the pirate ship, so it's going to be like every other time you play on this map, more or less, you're going to run into a Bastion, so just be ready for that one. And pretty much the easiest way to deal with a Bastion, whether you're attacking or defending, this requires like the least coordination from your team, is to have a Roadhog and a May, which you'll probably have by happenstance these days. But you get them, you get May to put the wall under the Bastion, Bastion's over the shield, hook the Bastion, Bastion dies. Problem solved. That's like the easiest way to do it. The hardest thing there is just getting May to put her wall under the Bastion, because sometimes it's very sad like that, but... That's like the easiest way. So defending, pretty much the best comp you can run on this map is Bunker, which is the case with a lot of maps at times speaking, but Junkertown is one of those maps where there's a lot of long sight lines, enemy teams going to be coming at you from mostly one direction. It's very hard to justify playing anything that isn't a Bunker comp on this map, to be perfectly honest with you. So it's pretty much the best thing you can do. So default position a lot of people have is just standing up here right at the start of the game and they'll just all sit behind their Orisa shield right there and just pray to God that they don't break the shield. I hate doing this because just imagine we're just sat behind an, an Orisa shield just like pressed this close up a wall like five of us stood up here. It feels terrible. And then the absolute worst, you watch the Orisa step forward to put her shield down, up oh, right over the edge. And then all five people are just stood up here about to die. So that's always very fun. I don't like standing up here. A lot of people do it. I don't recommend doing that. Now, if you're a person that benefits from being on high ground like McCree, Ash, Anna, Zen, whatever, by all means, stand up here. High ground is always still going to be high ground, but don't have the whole team stood up here. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend playing around this bridge right here and just using this as a choke point. A lot of people do like to stand up here. This is a more aggressive angle. It makes it a lot harder for a Bastion to get set up if you're still over here because you're just looking right at them coming out of the gate. So a lot of people like standing here. My issue with standing here is you have to go very far backwards to get to safety. And if no one's watching this door, and you might say, how hard is it to watch the door when you stood this close to it, right? Oh no, trust me. Everybody comes over here to shoot at these bad men and they forget the doors there. And then the Reaper comes out and he kills your team. It's very sad. Or he just kills like your support. It happens. So I don't like standing up here for that reason. A lot of people do. I like to use this though. I'm a much more, I like the more defensive options usually. And just using this as a choke point, less aggressive, but like a lot more consistent in my experience. So there isn't too much to worry about flanking wise. Reaper can do some teleporting on this map because he can stand here and like teleport over there. A little bit more like so, a little bit more. 300% speed, there you go. And he can teleport over there, mostly out of line of sight. Um, if he's over here, then he can teleport to the bridge. And, you know, if everybody stood up there, he just teleported past your team. So that's a common one as well. Uh, he can come up through here and teleport over there. He could just hop down as well, but you'd see him doing that. So they like to teleport over that way as well, and he's just behind you. So um, you can stand here and then teleport if I, like so, and then that's mostly out of line of sight. So Reaper can do a fair bit of teleporting from mostly out of line of sight on this map. So be wary of that if they have a Reaper, especially right at the start of the ram before you necessarily know. But like as long as you're looking in that doorway every now and then, you know, you'll catch a glimpse of him doing it, but you have to watch the doorway. That's the thing. The most common route is for them to go that way, walk up there and then teleport across there. So, you know, watch who walks up that staircase pretty much. Like I've seen enough people fall for it that it needs to be pointed out, even though it seems so obvious to just like watch these doorways. I've seen enough people completely miss the Reaper teleporting past them that it's worth pointing out. But there isn't a whole lot of flanking to be done on this checkpoint. Basically, the only flanking that's going to happen is, like, vertical people coming this way. Uh, this is a not terrible map to play far on, because um, she does have the, the uh, buildings to play around. They do often like to just float up in the sky, though, but this is a pretty common place to see a Farah. 
And, like, honestly, the scariest thing on this checkpoint is if they have a Widow, and Widow stood all the way over there, shooting at you. Like, that can be very oppressive, because that's quite far away. Like, if you got a Diver or a Flanker, they've got to cover an awful lot of distance to get to that spot. And bearing in mind, their team is going to be right there in the way. So, that's often the scariest thing. Or there's a Hanzo up there, an Ashton up there. Either way, like, long-range people up there is quite scary. So, the best way to contest that from defense is basically just to have your own long-range DPS, because it's a little bit difficult to get a flanker or a diver all the way up there when, like, the entire enemy team is going to be in the middle of your path. Makes it difficult. Uh, that's, like, the scariest thing. Also, if you're stood down here, she can't really see you from here. Another good reason to be down here. They basically have to come and stand up here at that point, or further back over there. Either way, that's a less oppressive angle, and you've got, like, corners to play around and everything. There'll be a shield here, you know? It's less scary. And if you're up here, well, now you're closer to them still, but you've got to worry about the whole rest of their team pushing. I don't like being there. A lot of people do, but I don't like being there. So, oh, by the way, if there's a Sombra, it's probably going to be here, or here, or if they're feeling a little scared, it'll be here. Those are like the Sombra places, sometimes back here, but this one's very scary for them to stand next to, because someone who's coming back might catch a glimpse of them, so, if they, re if they translocate back, but those are like the common Sombra ones. And if you're defending here, hey. She can't really use those, can she? Because you're just going to be looking right at them. Those are more of a, something that happens once you get pushed a little bit further back. But once you're back over here, like... It, it gets very difficult to hold the checkpoint once you get pushed back over to that location. But sometimes it does still happen. But there isn't really a whole lot to watch out for on this map, to be honest with you. Other than the Bastion coming right at you. The attackers don't really get too much in the way of options on this first checkpoint. Other than just like long-range DPS, the some flanking routes that they do have, like, pretty much just coming over there, but really, the enemy team is just going to be coming at you from one direction. I do see a lot of games on Chunkertown decided on the first checkpoint, just because the attackers don't have too much to work with here. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of them stall out here. I've seen a lot stall out here, here, and over there as well, even though, like, that's, it's quite hard to defend this place, but People are not too good at this game a lot of the time. So if you are back here, it is um, more likely at that point, because here's something you can do if you're on the attacking side, right? You can come up here and ju just hop right over. So if you're defending down there, like, watch for someone doing that, because I've seen enough Hanzos or, like, Reapers go do that and then just, like, start spamming down at people from here. And granted... They're pretty fucking close to you, but if you're just back here, right, like, not really watching that area, because you're a little bit further back, right, the tanks might see from being up here, but if you're a DPS that are support, you're going to be sitting a little further back, so you're not necessarily going to see somebody doing that. So the first you know of it, if no one tells you, like, might just be them popping out up there or coming around the back of you, so... Be aware of that if you're playing a little bit further back. Just, like, you know, give it a peek. Sometimes you get really pushed back, and now you can't even see over there anymore. So now you do have to be looking left and right a lot to make sure you're not going to get flanked. Because now, oh fuck, they might get either way, and I won't know they're coming. Uh, the tanks still might, because they're going to be a little bit further up. But, you know, you're relying on people telling you stuff at that point, which is hit or miss, depending on the people that you're playing with, so the further you get pushed back, the more you do have to worry, because if you're just up here, like, no big deal, I can see the flanking routes, easy peasy, and now, well, now I can only really see that one or that one if I go, like, really off to the side, but uh, now I can't really see either, because they're all, like, right there in front of me, so I can't exactly push up, so just be aware, if you can't see anybody on their team, maybe just be looking for them coming left or right. They can only really go right if they have some kind of vertical mobility for the most part, unless they just like cut off to the side over there while you're fighting. But you know, hopefully you see them doing that. But people who are genuinely like, you can't really know, have to have vertical mobility to really do that. Um, they could, I've <coughs> honestly, God, I've honestly never seen somebody do this, but they could, anybody could technically come over and do this, but 
I think I've seen, like, a non-vertical mobility hero do this maybe twice in my entire life. Like, nobody ever actually seems to come up and just, like, jump over. Because, like, if you're playing, like, Soldier or McCree, right, you could do that. And then they wouldn't know if they're pushed back and you could come around the side and try for a flank over here with your ultimate. But I honestly don't ever see people doing that. The way that McCree and Soldier players like to flank you on that one is they're just doing this. And then they're wait, like, wait. I've got my ultimate. And then they break off over that way or over this way to use their ultimate. I've never seen them do that. Like, basically only people that have vertical mobility take this path. Even though anybody can if you just go up the staircase. But bear in mind they can. Anybody could theoretically flank you from that way. But it will probably just be Genjis and such that do that. Um... If it's like Soldier or McCree are gonna flank you, they love going this way because they'll be further away from you when they start doing it, basically. Um, as opposed to coming around here. Like, if they come around this way, like, it's possible Anna's just gonna be right there, turn and trank the McCree, right? So, they usually go right if they're gonna do something like that, but it's, you know, be aware that that does happen at the same time. And that's about all you have to worry about, really. As you get pushed further and further back, like, well, now we can't really see any of the flanking routes, but I can conveniently watch this alleyway now, so that's nice. I can watch that one. And there's no more flanking to have at that point, really. Like, this is the flanking route, right? And I can just be looking at it now, so... You can't see that route anymore, but there'll be all the fuck way over there, so it's not much of a flank at that point. So at that point, the scariest thing is, like, if you're all the way back over here... The scariest thing is now people like McCree, Hanzo, Roadhog can peek through here and like get a different angle on your shield to try and get you from this doorway. So be aware of that if you get pushed further back because it's pretty risk free for someone to come through here and just go, eh, I'll just try and get a hook. Eh, I'll just see if I can get a headshot, you know, like you're going to be so far away from that doorway. It will be very difficult for you to collapse on them and they'll break line of sight immediately. So a lot of people, the further back you go, can start using this doorway just as a soft flank. They could do it from over there as well for a soft flank, so be aware of that. You're not really gonna, like, you'll see the Reaper coming, hopefully, at this point, right? Like, you'll see him walking over at you. The scary thing at this point is the people with longer range abilities just peeking through to try and get a pick behind the shield. And as you get pushed further back, you can now start using this high ground as well to defend from. And it's pretty good, you know, like you've got a nice wide angle. It's extremely difficult to get up here um, for the most part. Like I've seen Reapers teleport right in front of the Widowmaker here and kill the Widowmaker. But, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But for the most part, it's very difficult to get up here. You are kind of close to people. So Roadhog, I've seen Roadhog players just poke out that doorway and go, Widow's dead. So, careful, you're kind of close to people still from up here, but you've got a nice wide field of view. The problem is it's just very hard to get up here because you have to go, like, pretty around if you don't have vertical mobility. So, you know, if you're playing someone like McCree, then the time investment to get up here might not be worth it. You might be better off hanging out down there unless, you're, unless both teams are resetting because you will have to go... Ooh, all the way around, or ooh, all the way around. Either way, it's a fairly costly time investment, so someone like McCree, it might not be worth it unless there's like both teams a resetting situation. If you're like Soldier, you've or you've got vertical mobility, it's no big deal. Like Soldier can sprint up there way faster. You can just jump up there if you're like Hanzo or Ash Widow, right? But someone like McCree, you might not get the chance to depending on how the fights are going for you. That's basically the first checkpoint. So, second checkpoint, honestly, like, way more straightforward than the first one. God, I don't play me a whole lot of junk route. I'm fucking 300% move speed, Jesus Christ. We'll just take the stairs, how about that? We're moving at 300% speed. So, basically what we're gonna do here on this checkpoint is we're gonna stand up here behind Arissa's shield and we're gonna hope that we don't have to go down and contest them, right? We're gonna hope that we can just kill them as they're pushing through this little alleyway right here. Because they really don't have a whole lot of options on this checkpoint to try and get to you. The only feasible flanking route is through there and not everybody's gonna be able to do that because you do need to have vertical mobility. So... Not a whole lot of people can actually take advantage of that, right? Ugh. Oh, I thought I might be able to jump it with 300%, but, you know, if I'm bad, it's not going to work out. 
All right, sick. And then you're coming around here, so... You know, a whole lot of people can use this, because Reaper can teleport from here. You won't see him doing that if you're over there, so... Or he can do it from up there as well and get, like, um... A better angle to go further in, right? Like, eh, over there. So... And if you got... Reaper can teleport through there. Genji can just hop up there. You know, Hanzo can hop through there. A bunch of people can take advantage of it, and it's kind of scary because they're right there. So... You know, I've seen that. I've I've done this to people where I've teleported in there as wit as a reaper, and I've just seen the widow stood right here, or the ash stood right here, or the Anna stood right here, looking down their scope, and you just walk right up to them and you two tap them, no problem. So just check every now and then, especially if you know they have a reaper. Don't be like constantly looking over here. Like if they've got people that can take advantage of that. They will. It is only a matter of time. And, like, if they got a Hanzo, dude, Hanzos love to go up there and just see if they can get someone looking down their scope at you real quick. Because if, like, it's... You get drawn into a sense of complacency being stood up here. Because you're stood behind the Orisa shield up here, and you're like, oh, I'm so safe. And the soldier just stands here perfectly still, shooting at the bad men, because he feels safe behind his shield. And then the Hanzo or the Ash or the Widow comes up through that doorway over there, and goes fucking sick he's not moving and they get a free kill so just check it even like even if they don't have like a reaper or a genji they've got a hanzo a widow or an ash like they're still likely to do it so just be careful that you're not just standing here perfectly still just only looking over there check it now and then bob back and forth a little bit so it's not completely free you know people get really complacent about this spot because they're like well, what can they do? They can only come at me in a straight line, and then they forget that there's a window. But, like, we're, we're, we're kind of not really planning to do much else, to be honest with you. So there is the potential, also, of getting flanked, because you can. Because now the attackers are out here. They can do this. And this is a long route, you can see. But you come out here. So, if you're not watching this doorway then a reaper like bearing in mind as well right it's gonna the usual breakdown is like orissa and dps are up here zenyatta's like here anna's maybe back here or up here like either way the supports are gonna be at the back line here for the most part right so ah, just check every now and then just poke your head down like reaper coming no genji coming no because just doing this isn't really enough because if you peek back here and go Oh, fuck, Reaper. He's already in your face. Now, if you're playing someone like Anna, maybe you can trank the guy as soon as you see him, right? Something like that, but... For the most part, if you look over here, and the first you know that, like, the May Reaper, Genji, whatever, is flanking you, if the first you know about it is they're right there, they're probably still gonna kill you anyway. So, fully, like, go down here, and, like, look over there every now and then. Just, like coming no okay you know just take a peek because them being right there is gonna be pretty bad or if you're stood all the way up here like sometimes everybody's huddled together up here as well just like look back you know just like look back and bear in mind anybody can do this this isn't a flanker specific route anybody can do this maneuver so a mccree McCrees like to do this because sometimes they come around that corner and they see Anna stood at the top of the staircase and they go nice and they get you. So be careful. Anybody can use this flanking route. Like you're going to see Roadhog players come out of here. You're going to see Reapers. You're going to see Maze. You're going to see McCrees. You're going to see all kinds of shit come out of this doorway. Be careful. Especially if like you stall them out a couple times. They're going to be like, all right, let's do it. Now, fortunately, you can see the entrance from over here, right? Because they do have to come through here. So, as long as you're paying attention, you can catch flankers doing that. Because they do have to cut across like that. But if you're stood, like, here, you can't see. If you're stood here, you can't see. You have to be stood kind of here-ish to see. So, you can head it off by just positioning a little bit differently. And now you'll see him. If someone like Reaper is there and he knows you're watching, he can teleport across it and cut you off, but like... No one is going to make that kind of read on you, so you will see them going that way, as long as you can see into the room. Unless it's like a Sombra. By the way, this is where Sombra will be. 
That's just or if they're if they if you can see in that room because if you're defending like here ish they won't use that obviously at which point they'll use this one those are the somber rooms or they'll use this one but this one is usually close to defend to the defending team no matter what so they tend to not use that one but those are the large health kits those are the ones sombras like to play around but overall like that's kind of it for this checkpoint really like that's kind of all you have to watch out for is like that and uh that door that's kind of it that's, that's like the only flanking that can really occur on this map we're really hoping that we can just kind of like pressure them enough from up here that we never have to actually jump down to contest them if we do have to go down to contest them we want to do it from over here because then we're going to use this part as the um choke point the bend here and conveniently we can see into that down there now uh they can crouch walk past the door at that point though right so careful they might do that that's a small enough adjustment people might do it but you can see them from over there now uh you can't see up there easily anymore so now like hanzo's and ashes you know they love to get up there and just like shoot down at people from up here as well so as you if you do have to jump down like be aware that's gonna happen like that might happen still and you can still have like just because the tanks and everybody had to like jump down to contest the payload doesn't mean everybody else had to right like your att your dps and supports can still stand up here on the high ground and that's fine this now becomes scarier because there's less people up here that can feasibly defend you but you know high ground still high ground it's worth taking advantage of if you can especially like this high ground is pretty good this is some pretty good high ground it's not like the best it's no like second checkpoint dorado or anything but it's pretty good high and that's kind of all you have to worry about, really. Like, it's a really straightforward um, checkpoint for the most part. Like, they can't really do anything too funky. Yeah, I see a lot of matches get decided on this checkpoint. You know, Junker Town, you can feasibly win on any of the three checkpoints, to be honest with you. Like, they're all obnoxious enough to push through that it it's a it gets an it gets to be an issue. Like. It's just like this really long alleyway that you don't have any real options to like sidestep and the junker town payload is an awful shape like it offers the defend the attackers like close to no protection from the uh, defending team so like the combination of this map layout plus the payload shape makes it very difficult payload shape is an underappreciated aspect of this game dude like Rialto's payload. Oh, fuck. That's a good payload to stand behind, dude. Oh, that's an awful map to attack, but like, oh god, is that payload such a good shape to stand behind? Underappreciated. As you get pushed further back as well, um, you can start using, like, if you can't really stand up there because you're getting contested too much, you can just adapt and stand a little bit further back here, you know. Now that doorway no longer is an issue, it's in front of you, so you can see it at every point now. Um, you can come stand a bit back here. This is even safer. You can come stand over here. This is exceedingly safe, um, but not a very aggressive line of sight. But if they're pushing around the curve at this point, this is like the best you're going to get. Excuse the sudden jump cut there. I started dying. So, you know, life is hard sometimes. It was almost over as well. God damn. So this is like the best high ground you're going to get if they start pushing around the corner. And it's not too cumbersome to get up here. Hey, look, I'm here. You, If you're reinforcing, you can get up there just by, like, going this way as well. So, you know, it's fine. It's not a very aggressive line of sight. You can get flanked from over here a little bit more easily now, but this is the best you get as they start, like, pushing around that corner. Extremely safe, nice, big, bulky piece of cover. Uh, you are more likely to play against a Fara defending on this checkpoint, I find, because once... Once they're, you're not up here so much, they've got all of this geometry to work with, so I find Faras are quite common on this checkpoint, even if they didn't have one on the first checkpoint, but for the most part, nothing too funky is going to happen on that checkpoint. And this deal is going to be much the same for this one, to be honest with you. So the thing with this checkpoint is that People like to stand in not very ideal places when they're trying to defend because people like to stand here. This is very hard to stand right here unless you are really snowballing on the enemy team. Like, it's a lot of doors to be looking at at one point in time, right? Sometimes you do get to just like sit here 
and hold the bad men up there because they haven't figured out there are more than one there is more than one door they can use so sometimes that happens and that's nice but if they figure out they can go that way it's all over it's all over at that point um but that doesn't tend to happen so defending up here is very difficult defending a little bit more back here is not so bad because now people can use this as cover there's a large health kit here so like here no 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 here you know it might seem like there's no difference at all but there is actually a difference because now there's cover for us to use in a large health kit and we can dip in here to get away from the enemy team if we really have to right so here nah here that's fine that's okay um, people like to stand just kind of like halfway up here like don't do that either like this is this is dreadful this has got like nothing going for it except like oh there's a wall here i guess and like here but like no 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 like stand if you're gonna stand further back just stand like fully at the corner because then if something bad happens you can cut around the side no problem like don't stand just like randomly up here people do that or, like don't stand just like randomly like right here either like if you get to stop them in that spot and you're like standing on the payload to can get and test it all right like you kind of killed them in a spot where you can just stand on the payload there it makes it a little bit easier but if they're just like pushing up into you right now don't stand like here it's not very good um here fine over here fine um here fine as well if you like start getting pushed back basically you want like a corner you can use like you want something that you can use as cover and like you're just like randomly like halfway up it you know you get oh oh sick covered bro like like it's not great so you want to have something near you that you can use as cover basically um this is like usually the best spot i find but if you do get the chance to kind of like stall them out up here like this is cool but not not super common for this checkpoint usually what's gonna happen here's what's often going to happen is you're gonna lose the second checkpoint uh, but some people are going to be, like, halfway back. They're going to be, like, right here. And then the gate's going to open in front of them. And then they're going to die. Because they've got to go, like, pretty far. Like, like, if they're, like, over here, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, right? Or if they're, like, halfway up, they're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Should I go that way? Should I go that way to get back? Oh, God. And then they just get picked off because the door opens in front of them. Like... I very rarely see people get to defend, like, this whole first corner, because just the way that people come out of spawn on this checkpoint, like, oh, I'm gonna get back to the second checkpoint to defend it, they almost always just die because they, like, didn't want to give up that checkpoint, and then they get caught when the door opens. Like, that's what frequently happens in my experience, so most likely you're gonna be standing back here, like, oh, there goes Reinhardt up oh, there goes McCree and so the first opportunity you'll probably get to stage a defense is going to be this corner you know maybe this corner you know I find that just because of the way people are the attacking team usually gets a lot of free real estate on this first corner right here so be careful that you don't stagger yourself on this one because if you're like halfway up here and this gate opens and they've got like you know, a bunker looking at you, like, good chance you just get picked off before you get out of the way. So don't overcommit trying to save the second checkpoint coming back from the spawn. If it's gone, just let it go, dude. It's not worth it. So there is high ground, obviously, to use on this checkpoint, and uh, it's a little bit awkward to get up here if, like, you don't have vertical mobility. You have to go, like, a little bit out of your way. Um, if you're, you know, if you're up here, you can come up this way, and that's great. But... It, depending on where you are on this checkpoint, if you don't have vertical mobility, you might have no opportunity to get up here. But, hey, it's some pretty juicy high ground if you can get up here. And most people can get up here. You know, if you're... As long as you're not, like, Soldier or McCree, you can get up here easily. And, like, Soldier and McCree, it's not usually too out of the way to get here. But, like, if you're defending from up here, it might not be feasible for you to break off to get onto the high ground. But... If you can stand up here, it's pretty good. Um, unfortunately, you're pretty close to the bad men still, and there's not a huge amount of cover to use up here because, like, you can't back up far enough to, like, use the ground as cover so much unless you go, like, really back. 
unfortunately. But hey, high ground is still high ground, right? Now, if you're defending, you've got to worry about the bad men using it as well, because the bad men can just walk through that doorway up there, and then they're upstairs, right? And if they've got vertical mobility, even easier. So you do have to worry about contesting the high ground as the defending team on this checkpoint, because they can get on, the attacking team can get onto the high ground so easily that, like, if they've got anybody that can benefit from high ground, they'll do it. They will do it. So you need someone that can contest it. So a flanker or a diver. Just, like, have your own people up there and try to, like, have, like, your McCree just, like, really control the space by himself or maybe something like that. Whatever you decide to do, you need to try and have control over the high ground on this checkpoint. Because you can't just let the attacking team be up there, like, shooting down at you. It's too much. Now, again, you know, same problem that we have, they have. They're very close to us still, so it's not that hard for, the, for them to just, like, poke their face out and get hooked by Roadhog or um, halted over the edge by Arissa or something like that. But, you know, you've got to take responsibility for it. Somebody's got to contest the high ground. You can't just let them be up there. And, like, there's, there's really, like, nothing to say about this checkpoint, to be perfectly honest with you, because it's basically, like... Don't be stood in a random spot that's got no cover. Play around corners still. Control high ground. And dude, that's it. Like, where's the flanking route? You you know where the flanking route is, right? Like, that's that's the flanking route. Um, you know, theoretically, you know, if you're back here, they could go through that doorway and come through there. But, like, the scariest thing with that is, like, a Hanzo pokes his face through there to try and, like get around the shield or something right and it's not great for that he'd be like pretty exposed doing it so for the most part no real flanking can feasibly occur uh, if you're pushed far enough back it's possible that like a reaper could get like up there like if you're stood like defending right around here right then reaper just like gets up there and you don't know and the first you know is he jumps down on you and uses death blossom that's gonna be bad so bear in mind if you can't see like that over there well, even if you can, Reaper could still... Even if you're over here, Reaper could teleport up there and do the same thing. So, like, hey, be careful if they got a Reaper on Junker Town. There's a lot of teleporting you can do, basically. And it can be unfortunate. Um, but if you're pushed further back here, like, you might not know, right? And then somebody... If you don't know, and, like, somebody like Hanzo even gets up there, he might just be able to poke his face over and, like, get a pick onto your supports before you know that he's doing it. So, be aware of that. As you get pushed further back, it's harder to keep track of people getting up there. So, somebody might get you by surprise. But, dude, like, that's, like, really it, to be honest. Like, it's a really straightforward checkpoint. Junker Town, by all accounts, is relatively simple. Like, the first checkpoint has got the most, like, weird stuff that can happen on it, but... I, I would probably describe this as the most simple map in Overwatch, to be honest with you. Like, there really is, like... Very little funky stuff that can happen on this map, and what funky stuff can happen, people often don't take advantage of, so... You know, just don't be out, play your corners, control high ground, watch for people, you know, watch for people getting places that you can't see, you know, which might seem like obvious advice, but, you know... The amount of times you see people, like, the amount of times I've seen somebody looking at a reaper go do that, and then go... I wonder where the Reaper went. And then they're genuinely surprised when the Reaper comes around the back of them, even though they saw them doing it. Like, be aware of, like, the, uh... Be aware of what the enemy team can do. If they've got Reaper, vertical mobility, anything, they can get up there and just, like, go for a pick because they'll be right on top of you as soon as they expose themselves. So you need to be, like, kind of actively checking it more frequently, basically. Or, ideally, you're just never pushed back far enough that it becomes an issue for you, but that will be very dependent. Honestly, the biggest thing for this checkpoint, for me, is just, like, be careful on overcommitting to the second checkpoint, because this is where I see, like, the most people get picked off trying to regroup up for a checkpoint they've already lost, because you gotta go far back. Like, if you were here, and you lose that checkpoint, you're dead, dude. You gotta go so far. Even if you're, like here like if the door opens in front of you and like an Arissa or roadhog's looking at you like they're gonna halt or hook you as you're making this leap and you're gonna die so like be really careful on over committing on regrouping basically and that's it dude like junker town's a really easy map to be honest with you it's like well it's not i shouldn't say it's easy it's very simple there's not too much wonky stuff happens on this map so let's talk about attacking now 
So attacking, you know, we can just run the pirate ship at them. That's a classic right there. Bunker comps in general, you know, it's a good map for it. It's just pretty easy to get set up on the check on the payload for the most point part. And like, to be honest with you, as if you're attacking, like, I think it's pretty much always worth trying the pirate ship at least once because that's the easiest way to succeed on this map as the attacking team is just push straight through with one attack on Bastion. Now, so here's the thing with any payload based Bastion strategy, right? If you get knocked off of the payload even once, just give up on it, dude. Just stop bothering because the whole principle is that you get on it and you just ride straight through on one wave of momentum. If you get dislodged from the payload with your Bastion comp, it is very difficult, often impossible, to get set up on the payload a second time. Because if we were doing this, and we got here, and then we died, we are not getting Bastion back on the payload unless the payload gets pushed all the way back to our spawn, or we manage to wipe them. If your Bastion's got Configuration Tank, maybe you decide to give it a second one, at least so he can just try and get something out of his ultimate, if nothing else, right? But, dude, if the pirate ship stops working, give up on it. Do not sit for the next three minutes trying to get the pirate ship to work again. Once you get pushed off, it's very hard to get back on it again. Just move on, start doing something different. So... Uh, dive comps can work on this map, especially for the second and third checkpoints where you have um, more high ground to contest. And even on the first checkpoint, you do have high ground to contest because there will be people up there while you're attacking. So even here, but this is not like the hardest high ground in the world to contest. It's not as much of an issue. The second and third checkpoint, you definitely want someone who can contest high ground. You definitely want flankers and divers at that point. Maybe you're on long range DPS because they can kind of fight toe to toe on a lot of the high ground, but... You know, somebody, somebody you want to contest high ground. The defenders have got a fair bit to take advantage of this time. But, oh, give the Bastion a try, dude. Just, just see if it works. Just see if it works. It works more often than we want it to work. Um, it works quite frequently, unfortunately. So, um, as we established earlier, having a sniper up on... Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. If we have a sniper up here, this is pretty scary for the defending team. Um, this is a, a fairly obnoxious line of sight, so that can be very annoying if you've got a Widow, an Ash, or a Hanzo up here. Um, that's a good one to try and leverage. Uh, you've got this route that you can take. Anybody can do this, so, you know, don't be shy, right? Like, if you think you can make something happen by doing this, go for it. Uh, we covered all the stuff Reaper can do on here already, teleporting-wise, that will, like, trip people up, um, you know. They will frequently not be watching those doors, dude. You'll get away with it. Again, you'll get away with it more than we would like you to be able to get away with it. Um, but, like, a lot of it's just going to be kind of like fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with people. This is one of those checkpoints where um, having those ultimates that punishes people for being really close together is going to be good. Because they're going to be clustered together, like, up here, over here, back here. And, like, you chuck a blizzard in here, people are going to scatter. They're going to go, they're going to back up. People are going to walk into you. They're going to go into these rooms where they're easy to pick off. Like, chuck a blizzard in there, it's going to be great. Chuck a graviton in here, it's, like, pretty much guaranteed to get, like, three people. Hey, you playing Junkrat? Just shell into the area and then give him one of these, right? Oh, fuck the tires fast. Holy shit. Just give him one of those, right? Your tire might not be that fast, but hey, right? Same idea still. Just, you know, go give him, uh, give him those big AoE ultimates. They're very good at punishing people for cl being clustered together, which it tends to happen on this map. At the very, very least, like... Once they hop off there, they're going to start defending in there most of the time, and that's where they really pay off. Um, you can get some high ground people up here as well if you push forward a little bit. Now they can contest this, and then the defenders, they've got to, like, if they're on the high ground, they've got to worry about you, you know? As you push further up, you're a little bit more free to try and go for this one. And then at that point, you can, like, give them, you know, give it a try, poke over, see if you can get somebody. Careful you don't get hooked or halted, you know? You can give it one of those, you can give it a try. Um, you can, hey, it doesn't matter who you are, right? Like, this is always an option as well. I've seen McCrees get, like, pretty good flanks off on this because, and soldiers as well, because if the enemy, see, like, people don't bear in mind, like, 
ultimates like Soldier and McCree, like, we know this because we see the mercies high in the sky and then they go, oh fuck, when they hear the time of day, right? So, once people get out into this area, they tend to hover in open space a lot, so like, your McCree can just kind of come over here, Deadeye, and if they're all, like, right around the middle of this open space, like, dude, they're gonna die, right? Like, that can get some work done here. Soldier 2. Um, far is not terrible to use on this map, because you do have the buildings to use as cover and, like, poke and prod at them from. You've got a few different angles that you can poke from, because even over here, this would be easier for on Farah, wouldn't it? Hold on, let's just change to Farah, and we can illustrate some of the Farah strat while attacking, right? which is use cover, basically, but Farah players frequently forget to do that, don't they, unfortunately? So if you're playing Farah on attack, you can play around these buildings. Do be careful, don't just float out in open space, but you can give them some of these, you can give them some of these, you know, you can um, come around, do it like so. Uh, you could do it from more over here. You can poke through the doorway and give them a couple from down here, you know? We can come over this way, we can do this as far as well, like, that's fine as well. We can come over this way and use this rooftop instead, right? Don't do that. Give it be a little bit more strained, give them a couple of these, you know? Uh, you could come down and do it from here, you know, there's a few different places Farah can do some stuff from. And then, you know, as you get pushed further up, push further up, you can do some of this, right? Because if they're down there, you can play around like this rooftop right here. You can come play around like this rooftop over here. So you can use these buildings as far as fairly easily. It's just a lot of Farahs on this map do a lot of this. Don't do that. Always be thinking about cover in the third dimension. You've got a lot of cover you can peek and use as far as on this map to get some different angles on people. Just be bear in mind what you're doing when you jump, right? Like. Don't be planning to use this as cover and then do that, right? <laughs> then Widow goes, oh, sick, right? Be careful, but you can use all of these buildings as far fairly easily. You just have to bear in mind what you're doing when you're in the sky. And hey, dude, Farah, if they're over there, right? Come around the side. They'll see you coming, but you do one of those, you're gonna get some people in this hallway, dude, if they're not paying attention. And people don't like to pay attention. So, but like, really, you know, you don't have a lot of options on this checkpoint. A lot of it, unfortunately, on this map as the attacking team does kind of kind of come down to just fighting it out with the enemy team. Um, I really do recommend just going with the Bastion as the attacking team, to be honest with you. Just like, give it a try, if nothing else. Um, even if you're doing that, though, still want to have somebody that can contest high ground. Hopefully you can, like, stop them from ever really getting to set up up there if you're doing that kind of strat, but... You don't want people on high ground ever when you're playing it. When you're the attacking team, if there's high ground to contest on that map, you always want somebody that can contest the high ground because you can't just let people sit up there. There are some people that if they just get free reign to shoot down at you from high ground, they're just too overpowering to deal with. You have to have somebody that can contest it. Um, you know, once you get once you push up through here a little bit more, now you can. Uh, if you've got Rubkrees, Roadhogs, Hanzos, they can poke through here. Get a different angle on the shield. Really safe. Like, you'll break line of sight immediately. They're extremely unlikely to catch you. Uh, I will say be careful because I have seen, like, Bridget and McCree stood right here. Just like, he's gonna do it. He's, he's gonna do it sooner or later. And then they get you when you come around the corner. I've seen that happen, so be careful. But, like, you can go for some soft flanks here. Um, you can go for some soft flanks over here as well, right? And, like, this is still pretty safe. Less safe than the inside, but still relatively safe to go for this one. Just give it a try, see what you can do. Um, if you're, you can come around this side and do it as well. You know, if they're, like, right around there, you can come around and do it this way. This is still pretty safe, um, especially if you're someone like Roadhog. Like, a bunch of people break off over this way to chase you. Like, hopefully your team can capitalize on that over there. So, you know. Uh, that's good, and if uh, you start pushing them back, you if you're a long-range DPS, you can just stand over here, dude. Like, this is a pretty good line of sight by all accounts for long-range DPS. Like, you can see a lot of shit over here. They don't have a whole lot of cover to use, so... This is, like, kind of good over here if you're a longer-range boy. You can stand up here, get a little bit of high ground as well. Um, you know, ideal world, you get to stand, like up here or uh, over here, but like good luck let it, having the enemy team just let you stand up here. Like that's very unlikely to happen, but sometimes you get it and that's nice. Uh, as you get further back as well, they're more likely to use those places as high ground. So you want to try and contest that. If you've got 
flank those divers, they can just come around this way and then just like hop right up there. Dude, if you're playing Far, you can come around this way and go, hey, Widow, right? And then if you get on the Widow as Far and just like pressure him like that, you'll kill the Widow a lot of the time. Because what I was like, oh, fuck, far is there, shit, and you're, like, right on top of her, so you get a, you get a kill more often than not, then. But, like, to be honest with you, dude, like, you don't get a lot of options on Junker Town. We're gonna go for the options you do get, but, you're, like, you're gonna, by the time we're done, you're gonna be like, is that really all I've got to do on the attacking team as Junkrat? Like, yeah, yeah, it kind of is, kind of is, sorry. So, second checkpoint. So, what happens a lot of the time attacking the second checkpoint, I find, is that people start coming through this way. And if you, like, get stalled out one way or the other. And, like, a lot of times people kind of get, like, murdered coming through this area right here. Because they can have, like, if they've got, like, a Junkrat sat over there, just, like... His is arced, but you get the idea, right? Like, he's gonna get people coming through there. Like, it's very difficult to do that, so... Don't, and like, if they got like, a uh, fucking Arissa soldier, whatever, Ash that over here, just like, Ash is fucking chucking dynam dynamite into there and shit, like, this gets very difficult to push through if they start pressuring you while you're coming through here, so like, don't just like, tunnel on this path, this is the one people almost always take, because they come out of this door and they go, oh, this is the obvious route, isn't it? But, like, sometimes this gets really hard to push through, dude. I have seen them start, like, I have seen them start moving up here to, like, start fighting you over here. I don't recommend doing that, but it happens a lot. So bear in mind, this is not the only path you have to get back from here, right? You can go under and then like, hey, I might just be at my payload now, right? Like, depending on where we died. We can come around this way. Hey, we can start doing stuff from over here. Hey, maybe we go. Team, we're contesting the high ground and you come up all this way. Good luck getting your team to do that one. But right, there's more options than just this doorway and i've seen so many people like they're like all right we're going through this way Arissa puts her shield here and you poke your face out the shield gets broken really fast ash chucks some dynamite in junkrat spamming bombs and it's just like it's no longer tenable to come through this path anymore do something else maybe just go this way and jump down on the payload right maybe go this way and start coming from this angle where you've got like some cover you can use down here, right? Because you can't go across, like, here and start doing stuff from here. And, like, you still have to deal with the high ground one way or another, but this can be easier to get out of than going that way, depending on how it's going for your team. So don't just come this way. It's just the most obvious path, and, like, I've seen so many people just get fucked in that corridor over and over and over and over over and they just forget there's other doors anytime this is happening to you where you're having trouble just like getting back to where you were maybe just try a different door you know there's different paths for a reason try to take advantage of them so we've got some options you know which is basically this uh this is our option early on in this checkpoint right like we get to come through here and try to get some stuff over here like Dude, it happens a lot. Like, I've, I can see it so clearly in my mind's eye right now. I come around here and I see the widow looking down her scope. And it's just, even if you're far and you come through here, you go. And you might just kill the widow before she knows what the fuck, right? So, that's like one of the better routes you can take. Um, we can come around and go this way. This is way better for, um, like, real dedicated flankers. But even if you're playing far, dude, you can come around this way. And, like, if they're, like, all right there, you can just, like, pop out do that and like you will get some people right it's not exactly i wasn't exactly the best concussive blast out of there but like you know you can do something like that and surprise people real uh real fast right there hey yeah, pop up and give them a brush um i'm on far right now so i feel the need to point out hey you know concussive blast and barraging someone just looks really sick dude like sometimes that just looks really sick can still play far on this checkpoint there's still cover for us to use right like we can poke and prod from up here we can poke prod from not, not, not up there we can poke prod from over here once we push up you know we can give them uh, a little bit of that we can come over here and do this as well we got some cover we can play around um it's hard once they're there while they're there but once we like get a little bit more forward momentum you know we can use this as cover we can poke over here give them a little bit of this right like you can do some stuff as far on this map but you've got to be careful because there's likely to be hit scan dps for you to deal with on this map but 
you know, that's kind of it. Those, those are your options. You know, we got through here, we got through here, and we got through there. That's it. Those are your options. Um, this is one of those uh, checkpoints, again, where those AoE ultimates are going to be really good because, dude... You don't get a lot of cover. If they're defending, like, here, and you chuck a blizzard here, like, they're not happy about it. They're, they are never happy about that. Um, Graviton is likely to get you a bunch of people right here. You know, big AoE ultimates, Riptire, all that. Those ultimates that punish people for being clustered together are going to be good for this checkpoint as well. Um, better for this checkpoint than the first checkpoint, usually, because if you get people in this alleyway, like, they're fucked a lot of the time. Um... Big thing, contest high ground, because I've seen enough people be, like, fighting down here, right? Like, oh, their Arissa's right there, and are fighting at them. Meanwhile, McCree is just up there going, sick, dude, right? Like, soldiers just up there going, sick, dude. Don't let them do that. Don't, don't let them do that. You have to do something about it. If you're playing Arissa, even, you can, like, halt them off of this relatively easily, because they can't necessarily back up super far. Even if they're back here, you can halt them up and hopefully get a, enough damage in that you, like, really scare them away from doing that again. If they're, like, here and they, like, try to duck back, you can halt them over this edge, so even Arissa can contest high ground um, with relative ease on Junker Town, just through halt yanking people off if they're not paying attention. Like, contesting high ground is going to be the biggest thing. You don't get a huge amount of options. The more ground you get, um, the more you're open to being able to use the high ground yourself. Because once you start pushing them back a little bit, now your long-range DPS could come through this way and start using this high ground as their own at that point. And that can get pretty sick, but you do need to have a fairly hefty amount of control over the enemy team to really be able to get up here as the attacking team. But if you can... Right? Like, that's great. And if you've got vertical mobility, you know, Ash, Widow, Hanzo, they can all just, like, kind of get up here and use it with the left. If you need to walk up there, you know, it'll be a little bit more troublesome coming out this way. But once you push them back a little bit, you can hop up here and start using it um, yourself. And that's pretty sick if you get to do that. But you don't get a lot of options, dude. Don't get a lot of options. Um, yeah, if they're pushed a little bit back, if they're, like, kind of defending in this area, um, sometimes you get, you'll get stalled out pushing them through just a little bit here. At this point, you can have, like, a Reaper or, so, or even, a, like, you know, your May might be able to come through here and, like, chuck Blizzard down here, de drop behind them, Death Blossom. You can maybe get away with that, but... Basically, the best advice I've got for you for this checkpoint is um, contest high ground and have some AoE ultimates that will punish people for being clustered together. Otherwise, it is really going to amount to a lot of brawling it out with the enemy team and just kind of outfighting them. But the biggest decider in that one will often be who has control over this high ground. And if nobody has control over the high ground, it hypothetically should come out in the attacking team's favor if neither team has control of the high ground. But yes, uh, you don't get a lot of options. You don't don't really get a lot of options there on uh, Shunker Town. Yes. <sighs> Junker Town's a really bad map, okay? Junker Town is not a very nice map. It's, you know, it's very simple. It's a very easy map to understand, but it's very limiting. Like, there are a very few variety of strategies that really work on Junker Town, and they all basically revolve around Bunker or the enemy team playing badly, <laughs> really. Like, it's, 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 it's not very fun to play on Junker Town. You know, Paris is really terrible, Rialto is not very fun, Havana is not very fun. I feel like even Havana has, like, more options for the attacking team than Junker Town does a lot of the time, to be honest with you. Like, it's... It's not fun. It's not fun. Um... I remember when Junker Town was the worst map in the game. Oh, were those those were some simple times back then, back before they put Paris in the game. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, when Junker Town was the worst issue we had. Oh, God, those were some halcyon days they were. So third checkpoint, right? Like once you get to this part, it's not so much of a big deal, right? I kind of skimmed over this last part. Like once you once they're kind of in here, this is really like throw Blizzard in. They're dead territory, right? Like. That once you've pushed them back here, you've done most of the work. The most of the work on this checkpoint is getting through this bend right here. Once you've gotten through to this point, it's not that much of a big deal. It's just about getting, like, a clean fight on them. 
and that's going to be where the ultimates come into it more or less or um having like really commanding control of the high ground will also be a decider at this point but depending on your comp you might not be in a position to really contest the high ground or it might not be in your benefit to do like it might be your it's obviously going to be in your benefit to get them off of the high ground but you might not have people that can capitalize off high ground control so it won't be a big deal for you in that case but control high ground good times so third checkpoint um big thing if you're having trouble going through this doorway, like maybe you're looking over here and you're seeing a Bastion, you're seeing a Mei, you're seeing a Torbjorn, you're like looking through here and you're like, oh, that's not very fun. And the whole time you're walking up, you're getting like bombed by Junkrat, that kind of shit, right? Like, just stop coming through this doorway. Right? It's the obvious, because you come through this door. And shit, dude, where else am I going to go if I'm reinforcing, right? Like people are this way, where this is this, this path they see, so this is the path they're always going to take. Sometimes that path is not very feasible. So, hey, dude, no problem. We've got two other doors that we can use, right? Like, dude, we got so much choice. It's great. We can come through this way, right? That's great. Uh, we could come through this doorway, right? This is so out of the way that, like, it's so out of the way to get to this door that almost nobody ever comes through this doorway. But, um, you know, sometimes they're, like, defending from this position. And if you're playing Ash, Hanzo, um, McCree even, like, you can come through this doorway and, like, try to get a pick on somebody because they're looking over there. And, like, they're not going to notice you doing this a lot of the time. Like, sometimes you might even find a support stood, like, right here. And it's, like, relatively low risk. Like, you got to do this, and that's kind of scary. But you can break line of sight really quickly again. And they're unlikely to collapse on you that quickly. So this can be okay as a soft flank kind of idea. But often, un often not very well utilized i didn't even point it out while we were talking about defending right like very few people ever use this doorway but potentially you know you can try for this route as a soft flank as well um but hey dude sometimes that door is not very feasible if that door is not feasible this is the other best door to use basically because if they're shelling you up there sometimes like you'll come around this corner and they'll just be looking that way and you can just like catch them before they notice and you'll manage to, like, ho hopefully they're, like, kind of focusing over there and your team comes through this way and you can, like, capitalize on that. But even if, like, this doesn't necessarily work out for you the first time, the important thing is that you've now shown that your team is prepared to vary their movement, which makes you a little bit less predictable for the defending team because it's always very, like... It's very easy to react to the attacking team if they're literally just trying to push through that doorway over and over again, and your team is a team that can capitalize on that, right? Like, if you've got AoE denial, and, they're, and you're coming through this doorway, and they don't have to worry about anything else because they really are just seeing, like, six people come through this door over and over and over again. Extremely easy to react to because they literally don't have to react to anything else. As soon as you show them that you're prepared to use a different route... Now they actually have to react to what you're doing. Now they do have to actually watch and see what you're doing, where you're going to come from. And that in and of itself can be enough to maybe start gaining a little bit more forward momentum because you're less predictable at that point. But if you're having trouble coming through that doorway, this is going to be the best doorway you can use other than that. Or maybe that doorway if you're certain people. This doorway is close enough to that. And this doorway is like a narrow enough funnel that it ends up not being a lot better in most circumstances. But if you can't go through that doorway, I really do just advocate for using either of these doorways. It doesn't really matter. Just like stop trying to brute force this doorway over and over and over again something something have i ever told you the definition of madness right like try the different routes so if you get through there like you've got two options on this map right you know because you've obviously you've got payload right we're not even going to count payload route because that's obvious you've got two routes uh, you got two options other than payload route right you've got control high ground route where you've got you know, your own DPS benefit from high ground to enough of an extent where you controlling the high ground will start pressuring the enemy team. Because if they're, like, all stood down there behind their Arisa shield and, like, you've got people up here doing this, like, that's kind of scary for them, right? So, like, you know, if you've got a team that can benefit from being on high ground, then you getting control of this area can be enough to win you this checkpoint. And then your other route is flank, which is going to be coming through here, though that's often not very good because... People are actually kind of decent at looking back to check that one. Like, 
people have had enough experiences with that that people have kind of gotten used to checking for that route. So that tends to not work so much. Um, flanking on this map is better if you've got vertical mobility, because it's going to be better to flank like this than it is going to be flanking like this. Now, if you're playing someone like Roadhog, McCree, or somebody like that, you can still come through here and go for, like, the soft flank, and that's relatively safe. This one is less safe than most soft flanks, because you have to kind come kind of far out a lot of the time to actually see somebody, because they tend to be a little bit around the corner, so you tend to have to come out a little bit further than you'd like to, and this is pretty far to get away from them, right? So this is not as safe as it is for a lot of soft flanks, but... It's, it's an option that you have. If you're going to go for a hard flank, you're better off getting up onto the high ground and then going for it like that, right? Like That's going to be a better attempt at a flank um, than going through there. Um, Farah can still work on this checkpoint, but it's getting a little difficult now because this is like kind of all you get for um, vertical cover. But Farah does benefit from just being on high ground, so Farah can feed into a little column A, little column B, because you can be up there and, like, controlling high ground as Farah, doing just like this is fine as Farah. And then Farah also has the potential of get up here, walk around, barrage bad men, right? So she kind of does both. Um... Having um, someone like Junkrat is good on this map because the enemy team is usually really clustered together and these channels are narrow enough that like it's usually pretty obnoxious to play against a Junkrat. That also applies to Checkpoint 2 in hindsight. Um, should have said that one as well. But, uh, you know, like... There's only ever one way... This is two ways. To be fair, there's two ways I see people capture the third checkpoint on Junkrat, Junker Town, and I'm not exaggerating. These are genuinely the only two ways I ever see people capture Junker Town, with maybe like some extreme outlier cases. They do Bastion, and they just breezed through the whole map, no problems, didn't get stopped at any point. Or they get to this checkpoint, and they struggle, and they struggle, and they struggle, and they maybe gain some incremental boat feet over and over again, like maybe right, like. We struggle here for like a minute, and then, oh, all right, now we struggle here for like a minute, oh, and then like, fuck, it's overtime, oh, and we all rush in, and we throw like four ultimates into this open space back here, and then we manage to get it, right? Like, I really only ever see people win off of snowballing with Bastion, or just catching the enemy team with like four ultimates and clapping them. Like, that's the only way I see this checkpoint get um, can get captured, really. Um, like, the most other one I've seen is, like, they've got people up here, and, like, no one wants to contest the high ground, right? And then maybe the Widows and the Ashes and the Hanzos get to control the game enough, but, like, even that has happened, like, I could probably count that being the reason the enemy team won on, like, two hands, right? Like, it's always Bastion, or throwing like five ultimates at them. That's the only way I see this checkpoint ever getting captured because your options as the attacking team fucking suck, dude, for this checkpoint. It's awful once you get here. And at no point was Junker Town ever particularly fun to attack, right? Like, for the attacking team, Junker Town is such a fucking nightmare. Because you have to push through this whole channel. You're getting just harassed the whole time. Your payload doesn't offer you much protection. You're just like, oh, getting shot at the whole time. Then you have to fight over this choke point. Great, got through. And then, oh, I've still got to do all this track still. And then your reward for capturing the first checkpoint is, oh, God, the fucking Death Star Trench, basically, right? Like, oh, God, oh, they're shooting at me the whole time. Oh, Jesus Christ. At no point am I ever safe from the high ground. I have to be contesting it the entire time. And then I get to the third checkpoint. Oh, I get to do the Death Star Trench again? Oh, great. The high ground's not so bad this time, at least. It's awful attacking this map, dude. Like... This is why I just recommend going for the Bastion the first time, every time, try it. Because it is, by far, the easiest way to attack Bat Junker Town, and works quite frequently. So in my opinion, like, the alternative is always such a miserable experience, that it's always at least worth the attempt, if nothing else. And like, dude... 
you don't get any other options for the ch third checkpoint. Like, those are your options. You know, as you push them further up, the high ground gets a little bit more tenable for you. Because, like, if you're at a point where you control, like, this whole... Like, if they're in a spot where they're here, right? They control this space back here, and that's kind of it. Now, like, you control everything past that point, including the high ground on that, on the segment you control. So as you push them further and further back, the high ground gets easier and easier for you to control, just because you have more control of the map, shockingly enough. So, it gets a little easier to leverage high ground as you push into them, but, like, that entails pushing into them. And once you get here, dude, you are gonna get too CP'd if you don't throw ults at them, because this is close enough to their spawn, that people have- I've seen fights happen last here for as long as two CP maps. I've seen people fighting here for minutes at a time. It's terrible. And the easiest way to stop two CP situations from happening to you is and will always be throw a bunch of ultimates at them because it's about getting a clean dominating fight over the enemy team so they can't just like keep coming back on their fast heroes and their stalling heroes and reg stalling it out right like, the best way to counter that will always be throw four ultimates at them you've killed them all in one fight they don't get the chance to send anybody out to regroup like that's it and dude that's it junker town's awful it's not fun at least for the attacking team to be honest with you like if the attacking team isn't doing bastion defending this map is, is like pretty easy. There's very little the attacking team can do to you. The worst that's gonna happen to you is like some flanking stuff might happen on the first and second checkpoint. And then that's it. Once you get to the third checkpoint, as long as your team doesn't just get snowballed on, like I see so few ever play a second round on um, Junker Town just because getting this third checkpoint is such a fucking uphill struggle for the attacking team. It's dreadful. It's terrible. I hate it. So this mostly just turned into me complaining for the last, like, 20 minutes or so, but, like, I'm sorry. Junkertown, like, sucks. Like, you know, I hate Paris. You know, everybody hates Paris. I hate Horizon. I hate 2CP maps. Everybody does. That's a universal thing. But, like, to be perfectly honest with you, I've had more fun on Paris than I've had on Junkertown. Like, Junkertown is just such a binary map, to be honest. Like, there's... It's one of those... The architecture of this map is extremely stifling. Like, there is very... There are very few strategies that work on this map. More so than other maps. Like, you know, Bunker is great on all maps right now for the most part, right? Some exceptions. There's really, like, no other really tenable strategies on Junker Town. Like, it's extremely hard to justify doing anything other than a bunker on this map. Anyway, it's just gonna be me complaining from now on, so we're just gonna cut it there. Like, that's really all I've got for you for attacking and defending Junker Town. Just try not to roll Junker Town when you queue. Hopefully one day they give us an option to, like, ban maps or something, you know? Because wouldn't that be sick if each team got to ban, like, one or two maps? Oh, fuck, dude, that'd be sick. No, we'd never have to play on 2CP again. Oh, anyway. So, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship posts with us. I started streaming on Twitch Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. EST until midnight EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.